So I'd, I'd say that I was in a threesome and a guy blew me, but I'm going to lie about my steroid <laughs> use. Okay. <laughs> if I was going to pick one to lie about, <laughs> Lee, have you ever been in a threesome and been sucked off? No, I have never. But then I figured, hey, I might as well tell the story just in case that guy ever comes out and goes, you know that Lee Priest? I was in a threesome with him once and blew him. I can speak from experience. It's so hard for, for me to, to um, keep weight off. Uh, I can do one thing and it'll work and then, you know, do it again and it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the thing. I used to tell people, even when I diet for a contest, and I'd say it all the time, you'd see bodybuilders come into a show shredded and you're like, well, fuck, look at him. But then the next show, you're like, what happened? Why didn't he yeah. just do the same thing? And, and that's the thing. I could have one diet and come into a show shredded Next contest, I could use that same diet, but it never works yeah. exactly the same. You've always got to make adjustments all the time. So, like I said, even when you find something that works, next time you're doing it, you still got to adjust it again. And um, see if you can find like a fattest person in 1900s or something like that. Mm. When people say this about medical conditions and things like that, you well, look. Even, well, look back at when, if I think back now to when I was in school. I can't remember. We probably had maybe one or two, one or two fat people. Here we you go. You know, like overweight people. So that was the fattest man in the world. In the mm-hmm. like, do you, that was a circus mm-hmm. attraction. Would you, would someone pay money these days to go and that see? That looks like a normal person. You probably see. If you were to go to what fucking Westfield, <laughs> yeah, you'd probably see two hundred people like that now. Yeah. And even young kids like that. So this whole medical condition, it comes down to kids are less active now. They're more on video games. They're eating more crappier processed yep. foods now. Whereas back then people, you know, I think there was more manual labor. They're out there working more. The food was being cooked at home. You know, your mum or dad or whoever yep. would cook food. It wasn't, hey, we're going to get takeaway. You know, takeaway. Yeah was a fucking luxury back in the day you'll be lucky you know if you got mcdonald's yeah. once yeah. a month you'd be like oh mcdonald's or henny penny or something but yeah now that when you look at that that almost just looks like a normal heavy guy yeah. or it looks like plays rugby probably yeah no but- no i um look all i can say is if you th- think you've got a medical condition um or you know you're having trouble losing weight or that you can't lose mm-hmm. weight well, it's don't even don't like eat it, for two days. Yeah, well, it's even like the, <laughs> even the mental, even like, you know, you think back to now, how when you look at like mental health, how it's skyrocketed through the roof, you know, when we have so many things today, like phones, washing machines, clothes, yep. dryers, like you think of all the things now in the world that make our life easier, to yes. make our life more convenient, and we have more problems, more anxiety more people stressing out when back in the day but like you said they made things from scratch they went to yep. work they actually went through a time in life called the great depression and they survived yes it's like you know you didn't hear of this shit but now something little thing goes wrong oh my god i'm gonna break down mental health i think you know there are people out there that do generally have mental health problems but now i think it's also like a get out of jail free card if you can't handle life, just throw the mental health card out there. And I even see it now with so many people. I need a mental health day off or a D, even from work, like everyday work. It's like, fucking life's hard. Work's hard. You're going to have shit days. It's a shit day, but, you know, don't you need to fucking break down over it and fucking, oh, I've got to take a day, another day off work, otherwise I'm going to go postal. <laughs> okay. Like, that leads me on to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, what about your addiction to pain meds, Lee? Mm-hmm. Isn't that an addiction? And I always said it was. And the, the thing was, I took, like I said, I when I had my neck operations and the doctor gave me the oxy and I was taking it. And that's the sort of thing with those sort of things. You don't even know you're addicted to it. You're yeah. like, okay, you feel a bit, the long gear on them, you, yeah. you, I could feel like, Got to the point where like I didn't want to go to the gym because you just become the more you take you become like a zombie. Yep. I didn't want to go outside. I'm like I should go outside. Oh, no, I'm just in that uh, type mode. And then I thought, okay, fuck, I don't need them anymore. The pain's not too bad. And I went to stop them cold turkey, and bah, your body fucking goes into withdrawals and shakes and fucking 
feel like shit, so I put myself in detox. So yeah, I've talked I've talked about that before. Yeah, so you recognised you had a problem. Mm-hmm. So you know, you, when, when, once I found when I went to come off him and I couldn't do it straight away myself, that's why I called up. You know the Toronto private hospital, the Woodland Centre there. If anyone's local, and I called them up and said, "Look, I've been taking these oxys for this long, and it's shit." Now, I probably could have done it at home, but that's when I was with Jade and the kids were yeah. thinking, "Well, shit, I don't want to go through this shit with the kids around." So I put myself. They said, "We've got a room right there. You can come down today." So packed the bag and put myself in there for two weeks that day. And and it was hard. Yeah, yeah. In the beginning, it was. They give you like other stuff to come off it, but. It was for a while. You like laying in bed and just got pain. Your stomach's cramping. Yeah. You got fucking diarrhea. You fucking feel like shit. And then you actually like feel like shit because you're around with other people who are on fucking either coming off meth and heroin. <laughs> yeah, and other yeah, people. yeah. The funny thing felt people, right at home. <laughs> yeah, people that are in there are like, ah, oh, you're Lee Priest, aren't you? Yeah. Like, yeah, hi. So <laughs> a lot of people sort of knew me in there, but it was a fun group of people and stuff. So yeah, but yeah, but. I've never had an addictive personality. That's the thing, though. With those type of things, you don't know you're getting addicted to them. We, you know, compared to something like, look, I've done coke before, but I've had fun on coke. But yet, I can go yeah. a year or two without ever using it again and stuff like that. I've never been like, oh fuck, yeah. I need to have it. I need to have it. So I've never had an addictive personality. And like I said, once I realised I was addicted to the oxys, I got off them straight away and never touched them since. Yep. Yeah. And the final one. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it's also not brave when you're claiming health and you're taking drugs Steroids. and you're taking drugs, growth hormone no, to no. make yourself feel worthy. That's a disease, also. <laughs> well, let's go back to well, for one, steroids aren't addictive. <laughs> I think people might get addicted to. Do, well, I've had those friends that are like, you know, it's more of a mental thing. I can't train heavy without them and that sort of thing. But they're not addictive, and I only use growth hormone growth hormone once in 94 and once in 96 i would never say i got addicted to growth hormone but every time i took steroids before contests i could never wait to come off them and you know some people when they come off them they take hcg and clomid yeah i never did that because once my contest cycle was over that was it i would come off for probably three or four months until i got ready for another show so no it's not the same thing at all you dickhead (laughs) (laughs) now okay then that leads into um, <laughs> then the the comments are always um, have you've lied about that um, mm-hmm. how much you use and mm-hmm. it's not four hundred a week it's four hundred a day and, yeah but we won't go into that but all I'll say is but I mean, that's the thing too like I've always said why would I lie because I've always been like if you're going to use them and you're at that level and you're going to use them well use them don't abuse them and I'm telling you this is what I've used I've given other people small amounts and they've made the gains. That's why I've told people, if you're taking a large amount and you call me a liar, why don't you just stop taking that large amount, come off for a month or two, try the small amount, like I said, and just see what happens. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, go back to taking a large amount. But then it came down to two, like, yes, I'll be like, 400's all I've taken. He's lying. But then on my next podcast, yeah, I was in a threesome and a guy sucked my dick and I blew in his mouth. (laughs) I was like, oh, why would he say that? So I'd, I'd say that I was in a threesome and a guy blew me, but I'm going to lie about my steroid <laughs> use. Okay. <laughs> if I was going to pick one to lie about, <laughs> Lee, have you ever been in a threesome and been sucked off? No, I have never. But then I figured, hey, I might as well tell the story just in case that guy ever comes out and goes, you know that Lee Priest? I was in a threesome with him once and blew him. So <laughs> I've always been honest about my life. So I figured if I'm honest, <laughs> hey, no one can hold it. And actually when I was on the podcast, someone goes, because uh, they you realise... Um, like I said, I was, uh, I was standing by the bed. My missus was riding him. All of a sudden, I thought, fuck, someone's sucking my dick. And I'm we we're a bit fucked up. And I'm like, well, she's up there. It can't be him. I mean her. So I looked down. It's him. And I'm like, oh. And someone's like, well, why didn't you stop him? I'm like, I didn't want to offend him. So I just let him... <laughs> I just let him go. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and it. that's what I said. To him. I said too. Trust me. I said you fuckers that say you could tell the difference. I said, trust me, you can't tell the fucking difference. <laughs> he had no mustache or beard. I said if it was a dark room, I didn't know. You wouldn't know whose fucking mouth it was. And they're like, did you finish? I said, yeah, I finished in his mouth. And I said, yeah. We never spoke about it again after. <laughs> Couldn't look him in the eyes. <laughs> 
Uh, Matt, just go uh, away, oh, <laughs> hey, mate. Yeah, don't listen to that bit, Matt. <laughs> no, <laughs> Matt, Matt, Matt's, Matt's taking the door handle out. Yeah, Why is there a hole in yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, turns the lights <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a... Uh, um, I agree with man, you, man. It all feels the same. <laughs> Yeah, no. Um, yeah, that's the funny thing is, I said I've always been honest about everything. It's like if I was going to lie about something, <laughs> wouldn't I choose to lie about that sort of stuff rather than the amount of steroids I've taken? 